So the April MPD came out, and obviously it was good news for Switch in general. It was, again, the leading selling system in the United States uh, for that month, making it the top selling system, both profit-wise and number-wise, every single month so far in 2019. That's great news. But we're not really here to talk about that. We're actually here to talk about the Switch best seller list because something interesting happened that Nintendo hasn't seen happen since 2005. For the month of April, Mortal Kombat 11 was the top selling game on Nintendo Switch. Now, caveat to why this matters. That is an M-rated third-party multi-platform game. Heck, Really, if we think about multi-platform, we got to go back even further. Why? The last M-rated third-party game to top the charts was Resident Evil 4 back in February of 2005. It's been 14 years. <laughs> now, someone's probably going to point out the fact that, well, what about Bayonetta 2? Yeah, Bayonetta 2 did do it in 2014. How? However, Bayonetta 2 was published by Nintendo in the United States, so it's not really considered a third-party game because Nintendo didn't publish Resident Evil 4, nor did it publish Mortal Kombat 11. Now, Mortal Kombat 11, again, is an even more unique situation because at the time, Resident Evil 4 was exclusive to GameCube. We obviously know it ended up going everywhere, but at that time, you could only get it on GameCube, whereas Mortal Kombat 11 was available on all platforms day one, and it's still top the charts on Nintendo Switch. This is huge, and this is huge for a number of reasons, and I think the most obvious one is one I will get to in a moment, because I want to remind you to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. It is a bundle giveaway, that special edition Switch uh, that was released in November of 2018. I'll be sure to enter that giveaway, like this video, subscribe for more content. Now, let's get into why this matters. You see, Nintendo has had a problem with, well, multi-platform AAA games coming to their stuff. Uh, we have known basically since the N64 days that Nintendo started losing momentum with third-party companies, and they started going towards PlayStation and then eventually Xbox, and obviously on PC. They've just kind of been on PC the whole time. And it started with Final Fantasy, and it just went on and on. I mean, heck, here we are in 2019. We still don't have a Call of Duty on this platform. Heck, we had a Call of Duty, at least one of them, on Wii U, and the Wii had several of them. We don't have any right now. We got Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, but we haven't gotten any of the latest Assassin's Creed games, whereas the Wii U got two of them. And even then, that support kind of dropped off after Watch Dogs for Wii U. On Switch, we've gotten some sparing games here and there. We've gotten FIFA. However, not the current version of FIFA, an older version of FIFA with updated rosters. Uh, we've gotten NBA 2K18 and 2K19. We had WWE 2K18, although we probably shouldn't even mention that because that was an abomination. Uh, we ended up getting Doom 2016. We ended up getting uh, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, but both of those well after the launch of the original games, but now Youngblood and Doom Eternal should be day and date on Switch this year. The point I am kind of making here is all these games I mentioned, heck, Starlink Battle for Atlas, if you want to throw that in the mix, are kind of one-offs. We're not talking about the Assassin's Creed's the Call of Duties of the world, the Destinies of the world, right? Like, we're not talking about the, some of the biggest games, The Witcher 3, you know, we're not talking about all of the biggest games coming to Nintendo Switch. I mean, heck, another recent one would be Borderlands 3 is not coming to Switch. The point I'm making here is that AAA third-party multi-platform games are not fully supporting Nintendo's platforms, and they haven't done that really, truly, since the Super Nintendo. Yes, obviously N64 had more than they do today. GameCube had more than they do today. We had more than they do today. But that's kind of the point. It's gotten worse and worse every generation. And then we kind of made it get really worse. And then it got a little bit better on Wii U for a bit and then worse. And Switch has just been kind of, hey, you get a game here or there. But that's about it. But seeing Mortal Kombat 11 top the charts during launch month on Switch up against Nintendo's first party offerings, you know what that means? That means that finally a triple A third-party massive game, M-rated at that, 
has cracked through the Nintendo systems only exist for Nintendo games mantra, right? I've been touting this for the last couple of years that Switch doesn't need games like Mortal Kombat 11 because people are primarily buying Switch for Zelda and Mario Kart and Smash. And for the most part, that's still true. But Mortal Kombat 11 has proven to be that exception. It is that game that has busted through that barrier and said, hey, we're so great. People want to buy Switches to play Mortal Kombat 11. People want to pick up Mortal Kombat 11 on Switch if you're already a Switch owner. And this is the kind of success stories we need to keep seeing if we ever want full AAA support coming to Switch. It's not about power. Too many people focus on power. Power. GameCube was more powerful than the PlayStation 2 and still didn't have full AAA support. For you can argue because of the mini disc or argue for other reasons. But the bottom line is the games weren't selling well on GameCube, anyways, besides, well, you know, Resident Evil 4. So the point I am making is that this marks a significant turnaround for Nintendo with third party relationships. Seeing things like Mortal Kombat 11 at the top of the charts is huge. What happens if we see Wolfenstein, you know, at the top of the charts? In Youngblood, what happens if we see Doom Eternal top the charts? Even if it's not for the entire month, but only for a few weeks, right? What happens? happens if these big AAA multi-platform third-party games start performing as well on Switch as they do on PlayStation 4 and Xbox. You know what happens? You're going to find out that PlayStation 5, Xbox 2 or whatever they call it, be damned. They're still bringing their games to Switch. And you know why? Companies want to bring their games to where they think the consumers are at. I know that this might seem like some crazy concept, right? But reality is, power does not matter as much as you think it does. What matters the most are consumers. Who is going to buy your game? Mortal Kombat 11, one of the best fighting games of all time, one of the best selling fighting games of all time, right up there with Smash, to be honest, is, well, selling well on Switch. This is huge. Do you guys understand what this could mean? Obviously, we're talking future potential. This means that in the here and now, Nintendo Switch is proving to consumers that people are buying Switches to play AAA third-party multi-platform games, at least one of them. And that, my friends, is what all of us Switch owners should want to see. I don't care if you hate EA or hate Activision or Blizzard and you don't want to see their games on Switch for whatever personal agenda you have against those companies. Bottom line is we should always have the option to play those games and the games should come to the platforms that have the consumers. And reality is if Switch keeps proving there's a consumer base that's hungry for those games, we're going to get them. Mark my words, in 2020, because of the success of Mortal Kombat 11 and probably other AAA third-party games this year, we're going to see massive influxes of support for Switch, despite the fact that PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox will be announced and possibly even released next year. Proving, once again, that power is not what drives third-party support. It's never been what drives third-party support. Nintendo did not lose third-party support over all these years because of power. It is the common misconception of the video game industry that Nintendo isn't competing on power and that's why they don't have all the support. Let me tell you, the, the Switch could literally be a $600 portable PlayStation 4 and it still wouldn't have full AAA support because the reason we're not getting the games is because developers don't think the games are going to sell on Switch. They don't think there's an audience. They think people only buy Nintendo systems to play Nintendo games. And if you look at the sales of Nintendo games, it's hard to deny that that's probably true. But you know what's also true? The Switch is a very different system. I talked about this a couple years ago and we were talking about who the real audience for Nintendo Switch is. Sure, there are kids today rocking Switches, right? My daughter, who's eight years old, has her own Switch, right? Kids are rocking Switches, but let me tell you, you know how they got introduced to those Switches? How she got introduced? Through me and other adults. Why? Because Switch first and foremost appeals to adults that are busy. That includes me. That probably includes you as well. 
That is the crazy thing about Switch. Its appeal isn't just about the Nintendo games. It's about the system itself and the convenience it has of putting it on your TV and then taking that thing with you when you're on the train, when you're on the bus, when you're on the plane, when you're at break rooms at work and you're bored. This gives you a fuller experience than just playing games on your phone. And it's easily portable. I know you're like, oh, it's not pocketable. It's not. You're right. Maybe it's not pocketable for most people, but it's not that hard to throw it in a bag that you already are carrying with you anyways, right? Not that big of a deal, just like people were already doing with laptops and tablets. Now they're doing it with switches. And this is proving now, when we see games like Mortal Kombat 11 topping the charts for an entire month on Switch, what this is showing is that these consumers are older, these consumers are into more games than just Nintendo, and they will buy the game on the platform that they think they're going to play it on the most. They might own PlayStation 4s and Xboxes, and they're still buying it on Nintendo Switch because Nintendo Switch is with them everywhere. PlayStation 4 is only with them when they're at home. So... Again, this to me is massive news, and even as someone who doesn't really care that much about fighting games, I can openly and fully admit how big a news this is, and I really want to know what you guys think, and if you guys agree with my take on this, if you think I'm just talking crazy, and this really means nothing, obviously... Future potential is kind of what I'm hitting on here. Um, also, history here where it's been 14 years, really, since this has happened. Uh, you guys let me know what you think about this. I am Nathaniel Rufflejantz from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch each and every one of you guys in the next video.